how ballots are being turned in early this in early this year in Whitman County. And how a certain sport is having a normal schedule through COVID-19. Maroney's Aid starts now. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Humayun Khurram. And I'm Asher Line. Welcome to Murrow News 8. Salt Lake, City, Salt Lake City District Attorney has opted not to charge former University of Utah police officer Miguel Deris for sharing ex explicit photos of Lauren McCleskey who was murdered on their campus in October of 2018. Both her parents are faculty at Washington State and said in an email to the spokesman review that they are incredibly disappointed in Gil for not pursuing justice. According to a recent Washington State fraud investigation report, Whitman County Police and Pyre Fair staff misappropriated $1,350 in scholarship money. According to the report, three vendors wrote checks in May 2017 to support the Fair's royalty scholarship program. Those checks were cashed, but the money was not deposited into the county's bank account. There was not enough information to identify the bank or account that ultimately received the money. Idaho voters can now start submitting early ballots. Voting is now available at the Latah County Courthouse in Moscow in room 7B. Early voting will be available through the 30th with varying times depending on the day. Election season is upon us and ballot boxes around Pullman have opened up. Murrow News 8 reporter Andrew Barline is live on scene now. Andrew, what are the details here in Whitman County? Yeah, thanks, Asher. So I'm out here on Pearl Mall right now, and there were some skateboarders earlier, so people were taking pictures, but let's take a walk over here. I just made a new friend, Miranda. Now, there are official ballot drop boxes are all around campus, and uh, how efficient was this for you as a student? You just get to walk on campus and mail in your ballot? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Just come over here and put it in. Well, let's take a look. You just drop them in. I have my ballot here as well, doing our civic duty. Now, these boxes are all over Whitman County. There's about five of them. We'll put a graphic up to show you. We'll run through them right now. Southeast Paradise Street is one of them. Of course, this one here outside the Compton Union Building. The Election Center as well in Whitman County. In Colfax, rather, excuse me. That's on Main Street. There's an alley that goes behind that building where you can drop off your ballot. There's the Chinook as well. And then Dismore's IGA right there on Main Street. They have a ballot drop box, uh, too. Now, you can also vote the day of. If you see here outside the Cub, over there on the second floor, you can kind of see the top of it in brick. Um, right there, there's going to be people on the day of election, November 3rd, helping you uh, fill out your ballot. If you want to vote in person on that day, you can also do it uh, in Colfax at the Election Center, too. Aside from that, if you want to mail in your ballot to the Postal Service, you're going to have to do that uh, before the 3rd to make sure it gets postmarked by, by that date so your ballot ends up counting. Uh, here, Terrell Mall in Pullman, Andrew Bartline, Murrow News 8, and back to you in the warm studio. Thanks, Andrew. It looks kind of cold out there. The Pullman Fire Department's investigation into the wildfire that destroyed two homes in Colfax on Labor Day is complete. The fire damaged two more and destroyed a shop as well. Tony Nutman investigated the scene multiple times and interviewed witnesses who saw the fire. Nutman has concluded that the fire was caused naturally. His report says that a witness saw a shower of sparks on top of power pole. Nutman says there were two other private investigations into the cause of the Colfax wildfire. One was paid for by Vista Utilities and the other was a private fire investigator hired by insurance companies. Spokane Sheriff's Office said two juvenile suspects for a shooting that happened Sunday night near 55th and Riggle have been arrested. Spokane Sheriff's Office obtained a search warrant for the home near 61st and Pittsburgh where they were detained detectives found a semi-automatic handgun that is the same caliber as the casings. At the scene, detectives say it all started when the two suspects, a white male and a black male, were, were meeting with the 19-year-old victim to purchase a vaping pen. WC's clubs are still meeting despite all the changes brought by COVID. Maroney's 8 reporter Sydney Garter has a look at how they're adjusting. In other news, WSU's eSports team is participating in the PAC-U eSports competition. The PAC-U is made up of competing universities in place of traditional fall sports. The PAC-U consists of the same 12 schools that participate in the PAC-12, but the two organizations are not affiliated. 
the esports team is playing League of Legends, Overwatch, and Rocket League on teams. The matches will be streamed on the WSU esports Twitch channel. When you come back, see how high it was almost killed on his hike. And how the National Weather Service is predicting a different kind of winter when Murrow Musee returns. A runner in Utah got more than he bargained for when he ran into a mother cougar and her cubs on a trail. Kyle Burgess started recording of what he thought were bobcats but ended up being stalked for six minutes by a female cougar. His video shows Burgess walking up to small cats on the trail in Slate Canyon near Provo and then out of nowhere the mom comes up running up Burgess giving, gives her few choice of words and then starts walking in the opposite direction growling and yelling at the large cat, hoping to scare it off. Go away, I'm big and scary. Burgess between expletives, what's up dude, nice and slow. The world has reached a new record high in the coronavirus pandemic, with more than 350,000 cases in a single day. The US has seen more than 50,000 new cases every day since last Wednesday. Health experts believe the sharp spike worldwide is being fueled by a second wave in Europe. Here in the U.S., though, young adults have overwhelmingly been the most infected age group. But now medical experts are starting to see a concerning spread. Coronavirus response coordinator Dr. Deborah Burks says as we move into flu season, it is important to get your flu shot and continue to wear a mask. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced over the weekend that it saw a 75% drop in cases in Arizona after the state introduced a mask mandate. Pullman got some heavy wind and rain yesterday, and it's getting a little colder, as you saw with Andrew out there. Kylie Gibson has a look at what's ahead. Kylie, what should we expect coming up? Thanks, Asher. Well, you're sure right. It is getting a little chilly here in Pullman. I think fall and winter both coming a little harder than we expected. Today, we start out with a low of 39 degrees in Pullman and a high of 59 degrees, with wind speeds reaching up to 21 miles per hour. For tomorrow, it's still going to be a little chilly, however, winds are going to go down quite significantly tomorrow, with wind speeds only reaching up to 10 miles an hour, with a low of 38 degrees and a high of 53 degrees. Moving over to our state map, we will see that the weather is pretty much the same throughout the state, um, a, little, a little cold throughout the state. You can see over in Olympia, a low of 45 degrees and a high of 59. We move over to Seattle where, no surprise, it's still raining low 49 and a high of 59. Moving over to Yakima, a little bit of sun peeking through the clouds this afternoon with a low of 42 and a high of 65. Moving over to the Tri-Cities, a little bit windy just like it is here in Pullman with a low of 44 and a high of 68. Moving back over to Spokane, you'll see a low of 37 and a high of 59. And again in Pullman, just the same wind coming back and forth with a low of 39 and a high of 59. Moving over to our five-day forecast, you'll see here that Today it remains sunny in Pullman. Tomorrow it'll remain sunny as well. And Wednesday, um, a cloud and clouds and rain will be in the forecast for sure with a chilly low of 24 degrees. Thursday with a low of 23 degrees. And yes, you see that there's snow in the forecast. Friday morning, a low of 27 with a high of 39. Don't forget to pack your raincoats and umbrellas and stay warm out there. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kylie, for the amazing weather report. The, back the Pac-12 makes some changes to the season and how it could affect your team. Murrow News 8 will be right back. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. 
The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. I have Arcidiana and Vegas Sports today for Mariners Day. The Pac-12 outlined COVID cancellation policies today. Each team must have at least 53 scholarship players available each week, including seven offensive linemen, one quarterback, and four defensive linemen. If a team cannot meet these requirements, the game could be declared either a no contest or, a po or postponed. The impacted team has the chance to play without meeting that week threshold, but has the right to choose not to, choose not to play instead. However, with a frequent test administered by the Pac-12, the conference is in the best shape of any of the Power Five conferences to avoid an outbreak. The WC quarterback battle is locked into a three-man battle for the Spartan spot. Cameron Cooper appears as the leader at the first scrimmage. The redshirt sophomore has completed nine out of 15 passes for 147 yards and a touchdown Saturday. Mindset to do my job and get the team where they need to be. So um, it's a lot different than kind of sitting back and seeing other guys go for it and just Um, Cooper is joined by redshirt freshman Gunnar Cruz and true freshman Jaden DeLora in the battle for the starting spot. Both quarterbacks also excelled Saturday. Diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you. Your favorite brother. Your other brother. You. Your football buddy. Your football buddy. You, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has prediabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot. Your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. The WSC Student Entertainment Board landed YouTube celebrity David Dobrik for a virtual question and answer session. SEB Executive Director Skylar Sperber says he got the idea from other universities. Receiving very positive student feedback, he says the SEB has been able to use a virtual platform to its advantage getting collaboration from those who otherwise wouldn't be interested in an on-site performance. Find that event October 21st at 7 p.m. Thanks for watching. If you missed anything, this or any of our previous newscasts, you can always watch us on our YouTube channel. More news can be found at nwpb.org slash mnh, and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy.